All right. Welcome back, Eddie and everybody. Lin and Otter here to do another episode of Kingsguard. We're about to be introduced to Koshiro. Man, guy looks like he could really use a nap, though. Of course, when he wasn't off, the, the, who knows what, who knows what. Okay. It gave you goosebumps every time you looked over your shoulders and his eyes were there as if he was stalking you. Yeah. So, I heard from Leandros that you were spying on me when I left the castle. Thought I made a clean getaway. I was clear, I was careful to make sure no one was following me. But it turns out that wasn't the case. Mm. Got a lot of nerve to show yourself after ratting me out. I'm sorry. I just felt that it would be necessary to have someone keep an eye on you. For your own protection. The city is dangerous. Even in the warmth of the sunlight. I just did not wish to see you get hurt is all. Yeah, well, I can take care of myself, you know. I really am sorry, but it is my duty after all. Hmm. Suppose Leandros would have found me anyway. He always seems to know where I am. To be honest, I didn't even know you were still in the capital. It's been a few weeks since I've seen you. My apologies. I hope I didn't worry you. I wouldn't say I was exactly worried. Koshiro was kind of aloof at times. Of every person you have ever met, you can never get a read on him. Some people showed their intents in their body language, the way they spoke, their emotions and expressions, but Koshiro, he was an absolute enigma from the day you met him. You were about six or seven years old when he was brought to the castle. You didn't exactly know, why, uh, know the reason why other than he was supposed to be a Kingsguard for your father. Why he hadn't had one up to his up to this point, you didn't know, or maybe you had, or maybe you had forgotten. Either way, even Leandros was appointed your protector from the moment of your birth. He never talked of his past, no matter how much you inquired, and his emotions always seemed to be in check, of, or rather muted. Still, you never really had a problem with him. He mostly kept to himself, never complained, and he was always willing to listen. Though, because of his distant nature, the castle servants were always a little wary of him, dubbing him the faceless one because he never showed his true emotions, no matter what. Hmm. He's definitely a sad kind of goth boy. It was really only recently that he started to show any emotion, and you noticed... And you noticed seemed to be only with you. Or, oh, excuse me, sorry. It was only recently that he started to show any emotion. And you noticed seemed to be only with you around. It is everything to your liking so far. The king spared no expenses this year. I heard the royal treasurer had cried himself to sleep every night whilst riding in his ledger. I'm surprised father didn't just invite the whole kingdom into the castle. Well, I suppose that might have been doable given enough time. Sending out invitations to everyone wouldn't have posed much of a problem, with gossip through word of mouth, but the real problem would have been how to get everyone in the castle. Uh, Goshiro, that was a joke. <laughs> oh, my apologies. I didn't realize. Wait, is he, is he blushing a little bit? <laughs> You're almost as stiff as Leandros. And that's saying something. Well, I had my doubts in the beginning. Other than the hideous ice sculpture, the food, wine, and entertainment is plentiful. So I suppose I can't complain. Then I'll take it at that. Then I'll take it that this is a success. May I ask why you're out here, though? Surely the guests must be eager to converse with you. I'm not particularly fond of mingling with this crowd. Besides, the father just dropped the ball that I'm the that I'm the prince, and I'm not exactly in the mood to answer a thousand questions. I had to take a break from everything that was going on inside. How about you? 
concerned about me. I'm simply waiting. Waiting on who? For your father. Never know when you're needed. Father is busy chatting with all the nobles. I doubt you'll be called upon for anything. Unlike me, of course. He had Leandros drag me back here just to show me off like a sculpture. Honestly, I wish he'd just get hit by a wagon. You and your father don't seem to get along. It took you this long to notice. He's not the most charming person to be around, at least when I'm in the room. It just makes my blood boil whenever he opens his mouth. If he's not telling me what to do, he's yelling at me. <sighs> what about you, though? I've never seen your parents nor heard of them. They... I'm sure they're doing just fine. You don't talk with them? Work keeps me busy. Well, if they're not on your case every hour, they can't be all that bad. You took another large swig of your drink and made a disgusted face. Lately, whenever you had any sort of alcoholic beverage, most of the taste seemed to disappear after a few glasses. <laughs> It was like you were building up a sort of immunity to it. Getting drunk, with, drunk was actually pretty difficult as well. For you to even begin to get tipsy, you had to consume copious amounts of liquor in a short time. But the effect wasn't really worth the effort, so most of the time you simply enjoyed it for the taste. Hmm. You truly must have a cast iron liver to consume that much. I can't imagine that it's good for your health. Ha! This weak stuff just passes right through me. I had twice as much last year, and yet I'm still alive and kicking. You know what? Here. Tasting a bit stale. Going to need to, going to, need to get something else. Something else like my timer. Just a moment, Koshiro. I don't know how much more time you give me. You handed the bottle to the fox who took it with a bit of hesitation. Cautiously, he smelled it before setting it down on the railing. Caravan of blood. This is about as strong as it gets. <laughs> Perhaps they should think about cooking up something a bit stronger. Try a bit, though. It'll help you relax. If your father found me drinking, he would skin me, but I thank you for the gift regardless. Well, it's getting a bit chilly out here. I'm going to head back inside. A frog in a well knows nothing of the sea. Some words of wisdom for me? Interpret it as you may, but from where I come from, it is a lesson learned at a young age. What you have been taught or seen may not always be the truth. That is what I've taken from it. Many destroy themselves because they become too overconfident and blind themselves to the realities of the world. I know you are not one of those people, but it never hurts to be reminded of what little we all know. <laughs> Part of the reason why I read so much, there's, so, there's much knowledge to be gained from books. And Father ne never let me leave the castle anyway, so I had to find some way to pass the time. I'm sure there will come a time when you will understand why he makes the choices he does. If that day ever comes, I'll be sure to bring a blanket to prepare myself for when hell freezes over. Speaking of freezing, I'm going in. You coming? I actually should be checking on something myself. Alright, I guess I'll see you some other time. Linnaeus, if you ever wish to talk, I... Hmm? Never mind. Take care. Ooh, he vanishes. Aw. He's a soft boy on the inside. Without saying another word, he melded into the shadows once more. Hey. Are you still there? You waited for him to reply, but none came. Other than the door into the ballroom, there was nowhere else for him to go unless he jumped off the edge. <laughs> He took a quick peek over the railing and glanced down. It was about a 500 foot drop down, not the easiest route off of the veranda. And cautiously, you took another look around, 
your eyes straining in the darkness to catch even a glimpse of him or his eyes. It appeared as though you were alone. You should really think about working for the circus with a magic trick like that. He stared at the bottle he left untouched and picked it back up. Mm, would it be a shame to waste this, though? He turned back towards the doors and headed inside. Nice music. It was a night to remember, or forget if you could. <laughs> the number of nobles that came up to you was numerous, all wanting to know more about this mysterious king that had been kept secret for so long. You wanted to brush them off, but that would have gotten you in more trouble, so you smiled and answered their concerns. Though the vast majority that came up to you were those with who... Uh, were those who you had recognized as bootlickers, hoping to gain your father's favor. Their humility was rather sad to see knowing oh, their humility was rather sad to see, knowing that they were only here in hopes to boost their own social standing. The crowd parted as a tall figure started his way towards you, your eyes narrowed as you met with his, and your heart began to beat faster and faster. Despite his age, with this graying hair and slightly wrinkled face, the king walked with a sturdy gait and a strict face. He was always trying to keep up appearances and look more intimidating than he actually was. Linnaeus. Father. A moment of silence passed before you gathered the courage to say something. I must say, this is quite the party that you have thrown. Of course, you are spearheading everything without ever talking to me once about it, so of course it'd be perfect. Tell me. Did you do all this just for me, or was it to show off to the nobles? Jeez, what a, what a tongue he has. The grinding of your father's teeth and the reddening of his face was all you needed to know that you finally struck a nerve. Watch your tongue, Linnaeus. It's a legitimate question. After all, it would be terrible for you to lose face amongst all these people. And that awe-inspiring speech, I'm sure that you really impressed the guests with that one. If you weren't too busy cavorting around the city like a damn dog off its leash, you'd have been here to, pra to practice the speech I'd prepared. Of course, I had to make revisions because of your negligence. Well then, I apologize everything didn't go your way. Truly, I am deeply sorry. If you were truly sorry, you'd watch your tone with me. Now I have someone to introduce you to, so be on your best behavior. Your father's stern face softened as he turned to greet two nobles who appeared in his wake. At first, they appeared to be a couple. Reynard, you must. Lord, Lord Baynet and Lady Je Jevine. This is my son, Linnaeus. Ah, the illustrious man of the evening. Your father has told us so much about you. It's good to finally meet in person. And just look at you, so handsome as well. I can see where he gets the looks good I can see where he gets the looks from. He wanted to roll your eyes, but decided to keep things as drama free as you could, at least until you could get away. You shook Bennett's hand with a firm grip and got down on one knee to gingerly kiss a large gemstone ring stuck on Javine's index finger. Javine's? Your father noticed a bottle of wine still in your hand and raised an eyebrow while you just smiled back. If you thought you were going to just play nice and follow his rules, you had another thing coming. Or he did. <laughs> you, could be on, you could be on your best behavior and still be a thorn in his side. I thank you for traveling all this way just to attend my birthday. Well, when the king sends out invitations, you can't just say no. As soon as I heard the, that the coronation would be following soon after, I just had to make time for it. I'm certain there are plenty of other important duties you had to attend to then... To, to, uh, I'm certain there are plenty of other important duties you had to attend to than to make the journey out here. Oh, nonsense, my boy. <laughs> it is my pleasure to be here and be graced by the king and prince themselves. But I'm sure the journey must have been quite arduous, especially with all the bandits on the road and, and the rough trip through the Havana Pass. Oh, I would have traveled from the furthest edges of the world just to be here. <sighs> it must be nice to be able to leave home. After all, I've never left the city before. Father says it's quite dangerous out there. Full of nasty little uprints must remain home in order to watch over the kingdom. After all, your duties to the nation should come first before all else. Isn't that right? 
but it is quite difficult to understand the intricacies of how to run a kingdom without first venturing out to witness it firsthand. And that is why you have your council to guide you. I see. So then I should allow them to dictate my decision making while I stay blind to the world around me? <laughs> you and your father both glared at each other in an awkward silence, neither wanting to take the high ground. This kind of passive aggressiveness was just common among the two of you, and this was just the tip of the iceberg. Though, thankfully, Lord Bennett cleared his throat, and the sudden movement of a young lady behind him distracted the two of you before things escalated too far. Ah, uh, right. Where are my manners? This is my daughter, Ange Angela. It wasn't easy to notice her. It wasn't easy to notice her with the way she blended in with the crowd, and that was likely not something she did on purpose. Bennett moved out of the way to introduce her. She gave a quick curtsy while you ignored your father to bow back. She didn't have much of a presence herself, despite how extravagant her gown and jewelry was. It was a, it was as though it wore her rather than the contrary. Oh, it was as though it wore her rather than the contrary. Without a portrait to remind you, she seemed almost forgettable, and you guessed that that was likely the reason why she wasn't introduced earlier. She kept her gaze to the floor and her hands to her back as she swayed ever so slightly. Oh, she's shy. Ange Angela will be turning... Angela will be turning 20 this year, come late fall. I see. Time certainly does fly right on by, doesn't it? If I do recall, the last time the two of you visited, I don't believe she accompanied you. This must be your first visit, is that correct? Y yes my liege. I was unable to travel because I was so sick. So for me to be here is truly is a dream. She spoke so softly you didn't even catch any of what she said. In that case, Linnaeus... Why don't you give her a tour of the castle? That is, if you don't mind. You held back a scowl and forced a smile. Yes, I would love to. Excellent. I trust that this is also okay with you as well. I believe that sounds like a marvelous idea. What better way to introduce the two of them? I'm sure they'll get along quite fine. Well then, the two of you enjoy yourselves. A father gave you one last glare before ushering Bennett and Javine, Javin, Javine, <laughs> to the far side of the room, likely to speak of more political matters. So, so this is what Leandros meant by that. The, oh, so this is what Leandros meant by he had something he wanted to talk to you about. Another setup. You hadn't told your father of your preferences yet, that you had your eyes for men. But how could you? A stern man such as him never strayed from tradition and what he felt was right for you and the kingdom. You could never let him know. He, who on a monthly basis would send word out for you to find a suitable partner. All women, of course. Part of you wished, though, you weren't an only child. Then the pressure wouldn't have been on you to become king and find a suitable queen. The girl still had her eyes to the floor as she fiddled with her dress. Of all the women that your father tried to set you up with... He chose someone this weak and feeble-looking. Well, at least she wasn't headstrong and blunt. They were nearly impossible to get away from. You could deal with this one easily enough. So, uh, do you drink? Oh, uh, no, not, not really. I mean, my father sometimes lets me have a little wine. Only during special occasions, though. Well, I would say that tonight is a very special occasion, wouldn't you? He waved over a servant with a tray of drinks and plucked two glasses. After swirling one around in your hand and taking a quick sniff, a sly grin spread across your face. While it wasn't anything as strong as Caravaran blood, Saravaran? Saravaran blood? Someone so inexperienced in wine tasting might be knocked off their feet in just a few sips. This one is truly sublime vintage and one of my personal favorites. If Brom knows anything, is that they know how to make a fine white wine. It was crafted in the Third Era, right before the Grape Famine that erased an entire subspecies from the land, so very few bottles still exist in the world. I... I see. Try it. I think you might like it. You handed the cup to the lady, and she cautiously took it in both hands. You quickly guzzled down your own glass in a single gulp and finished with a satisfying... Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. 
She stared deeply into the liquid before gingerly taking a sip. It might have been a bit strong as one hand went to her throat. There are plenty other of others out there that have been crafted in an attempt to imitate its subtle flavor and mellowness, but none come close to the original. <coughs> well, it, it, it certainly is distinct. <clears throat> you don't like it? It's different. Sometimes it takes getting used to. Perhaps you should try a bit more. There was still enough wine left over in your bottle, so you poured out another cup, nearly overflowing to the rim, and drank it all down as well. Jeez, a bit of juice dribbled out the corner of your lips, so you wiped it away with your arm and smiled with childish innocence. After seeing that, oh, after seeing that, she took yet another drink, this time forcing it down until she was finished. How bold. Despite that, the puckering of her face showed her slight dislike for the taste. Oh. <laughs> no need to force yourself. If you don't like it, no need to drink it. <laughs> My father taught me it's never good to waste. I see. All at once, the figurative cogs within your mind began to turn. Hmm. It looks like Linnaeus is the gamey type, and she seems nice. Let's, you know, let's not abandon her. Come on now. Play a game. Uh, t tell me again what, if this might... Well, nah, don't tell me anything just yet, I guess. Or, I don't know. Hmm. What kind of colors would this young lady truly show with a bit of wine flowing through her veins? Mm -hmm. Would she stumble to and fro, dribbling all manner of nonsense from her mouth? Perhaps she would become irritable and hostile at the slightest inconvenience, screaming and lashing out at anyone within her reach. A devilish grin spread across your face. It was your birthday, after all. A little fun never hurt anybody. You took your bottle of Cerevran blood and poured the remainder into her chalice. If this wasn't enough to knock her off her feet, then you weren't certain what would happen. We have so many wines to try. Why not find one you might enjoy? She looked at her glass, then back at you, then back at her glass, and slightly gulped. Oh, okay, now I feel kind of bad. Aw, I feel kind of, maybe this is kind of mean. You waited patiently, with expectant eyes. She almost had no choice but to give in. I don't suppose it wouldn't hurt to try. Again, she chugged the glass down and made the same puckered face. Excuse me. You caught the attention- Oh, excuse me. You caught the attention of another servant and he quickly made his way over. You exchanged the empty glass in Angela's hand for a full one on the server's platter. Okay, I feel bad. This is kind of- this is, I thought by like playing a game, he was just gonna- I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. And clearly, then Linnaeus didn't know either. You might like this one. Oh, uh, another one? You don't want it? I suppose I am being a bit too forceful. My apologies. It isn't often that I find my many who are able to drink with me. You know, being prince and all. Please, take it away. It seems the young lady has had enough. Oh, wait. <clears throat> Just as the serpent reached forth to retrieve the glass, Angela held on to the cup tighter. I'll try it. It, it is an occasion, after all. Maybe you are being cruel, but it was kind of fun. It was not. I feel bad. After that third glass, you could already tell her steps had become a bit less elegant. Uh-oh. Her face became flushed, eyes unfocused, and mouth slightly slack. She could barely speak without tripping over her own words, and you knew that she had enough. If... If you would... Ex excuse me. Lady Angela, where are you going? I... I just need to... Need to rest for a brief moment. Oh gosh, I'm kind of nervous. Like, did we just give this poor girl alcohol poisoning? Like, if she... Does, I'm a little concerned, Linnaeus. Oh, what did I do? What have I done? You wondered if she would even be able to make it to a chair much less even be able to coordinate herself to sit down in one. It was a bit of a distance to the nearest chair, the closest thing being the banquet table. She started her journey, swaying to and fro, every, uh, every so often bumping into a dancing couple who scalded her with some unsavory insults. Aww. Though you doubted she cared or was even aware. Just when you thought she would have made it... Oh no! Uh-oh... She ran right into the dessert table. Cakes, pies, custard, and all manners of sweets were whisked off the table off of the table and splattered right down on her as she gripped onto the cloth for support. 
Her hair and dress were ruined in an instant. She was painted head to toe in brown chocolate, blue, purple, and red berry fillings, and drenched in juice and wine. If that weren't embarrassing enough, the already weakened and melting ice sculpture came crashing down, shattering to the floor into a thousand pieces. The entire place was a mess as servants quickly gathered around to clean up the mess and assist the stumbling lady. You almost felt sorry for her? Linnaeus, that was so mean. I mean, I guess I made the choice. Oh, it did not have to be done, but it had to be done. Jeez. Oh, anyone who couldn't hold their alcohol had no business in your love life. Hey, that's a, it's an acquired taste, Linnaeus. People don't just... Like, babies aren't just born sipping wine from their mother's teat. Goodness. That was mean. And though father would never let this one go, the damage was already done. I feel bad for her. After she was helped out of the room to get cleaned up, the nobles began to gossip. It couldn't be helped. It was what they lived and breathed for. In a matter of minutes, the entire castle knew the name of the young girl that had stumbled into the banquet hall table, and soon after, Lord Bennett and Lord Javine... Javine was heard to have left the castle. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed for her. There was no doubt in your mind that your father would soon be after you, so you did your best to remain as discreet as you could for the remainder of the night. And as the floor was being set for the first dance, to which your father was likely expecting you to be present, you snuck off to the side of the room with a few bottles of wine and guzzled them down. After all, what good was a dance if you were too drunk to even properly stand? When you were finished with your second bottle, you noticed the room swayed from one way to the other, and your vision was slowly starting to blur. Your father finally located you part way through the th your third, le uh, heaving in the corner of the room. Oh, the only thing you could remember was being helped out of the ballroom by your soldiers, your father yelling sharply into your ears. Yeah, I just wanted to get to the end of the party. I know this episode's probably a bit longer than intended. That sound. Who could be reading this late? What's this music? What? Huh? How did I get here? Oh, did, did I sleepwalk? What the heck? You were surrounded on all sides by rows upon rows of shelves, all packed full of books that stretched off so far into the distance you couldn't see the end. The stale air smelled of aged parchment and burning oil. There was no breeze, but an eerie wail like the harrowing wind resulted from every corner. It appeared that you were in a library, though not one you were familiar with. As you wandered further around, you noticed small statues perched at the edge of, the sh of each shelf, carved so lifelike you nearly believed it to be real. If it wasn't for the cold, white, emotionless face, you'd almost feel like it could be begins to start talking. Creepy. It was quite unsettling, to say the least. So much so that you avoided each and everyone's gaze as you passed on by. You brought up your arms and rubbed your shoulders. It was unreasonably chilly here, like someone had left the windows open on a winter night. Yet, despite how cold it was, how much your body started to shiver, you could not see your breath. As far as you could tell, there were no doors or windows in sight. Even as you traveled further on, all you could see was more shelves of books and statues. It was dim, yet not dark enough that you had to strain your eyes to see. As far as you could tell, you didn't know how you could even see in the first place. There wasn't a candle in sight. Rather, a soft yet eerie glow still radiated off of the floor and walls. Hello? Is anyone there? You spoke against your better judgment into the shadows, hoping you were alone, or that if you weren't, that someone else friendly resided nearby. When your voice, when your echoed voice finally settled down, you awaited for an answer, but none came back. All right, I think we're gonna pause it here for now. Something interesting is happening, and uh, yeah, it got a little creepy. <laughs> and you know what? Linnaeus deserves it. He was being kind of a jerk again. I guess it was kind of me that was being a jerk. But like a band here, and she's, I don't know, man. I guess there was no good way for this to end. But we'll see if this has a good way of ending um, from whatever is happening, about to happen. But uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked it. And I didn't mind a slightly longer episode. 
um, you know, I'm just going to, I think 30 minutes ish. And so around that area, it's going to be the new norm. I, again, feel free to comment, say if you like it, if you prefer shorter ones, you know, let me know. I, I'm really open to suggestions and stuff. But um, outside of that, I think I'll call it a day for now. Got to get ready for work. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you have a good day, a good night, a good evening, whatever it is for you. And uh, yeah, we'll just see you next time. Take care. Bye for now.